I'm curious, Mr. Miyamoto, why you guys decided that now is a good time to kind of shake up the Zelda formula? So, you know, um, we actually try to do that every time uh, we create uh, Zelda, we talk about it. So uh, there's the, that kind of uh, notion from the shift from Twilight Princess to Skyward Sword and even the uh, Link to the Past remake of the 3DS version. Uh, we had um, all the items available in the beginning and you kind of can take on challenges as you wanted to. And this time around, we uh, implemented the physics engine and try to recreate nature. And because um, adventuring and exploring nature is what makes the game. We kind of had to relook at what dungeons meant for us and try to um, uh, take that outside of the dungeon. And so that's, um, you know, we spent five years kind of working on that. Do you feel like you're trying to modernize the Zelda brand or do you feel like you're more looking back at the original Zelda and trying to like kind of harken back to what made that exciting in, in, with modern technology? So I think um, in terms of Zelda, in terms of Mario as well, as the technology and the technique evolves, uh, Zelda and Mario evolves with it. Uh, for example, the reason Mickey Mouse has, you know, has, has uh, lasted so long is that he's evolved with um, the evolution of a movie and the history of movie. And so like that, I think... Um, Zelda and Mario will uh, continue to evolve as more new uh, advanced technology and techniques become available and try to expand on their worlds. So I'm curious to know what your your opinion on the role of a guided storyline is in a Zelda franchise. Do you think that's important or do you think it's more important that people have the opportunity to sort of create their own story in an open world? You know, for myself personally, I prefer the latter, where the player um, creates their own uh, story, so I don't think there needs to be such an in-depth story. But I know there are people who really enjoy uh, in-depth, heavy, deep uh, cutscenes or storyline, so it's kind of trying to find a balance between those two. And I think in this game we were able to create a game where uh, the player, yeah, the drama happens within the player. So I think um, uh, that's something that we were able to do and I've been working on in this game. I found it really interesting, the new trailer shows off a lot of animals in the game, so I'm just curious to your opinion on what the importance of animals are in the game and like how do they help bring the world to life? We've made um, other animals like Epona, the horse, but when we're trying to create um, a natural world, animals are actually uh, obviously a very important aspect of that. As we went along in development, we realized that you know there's uh, necessities that people have like eating, and so there's this aspect of uh, hunting and survival in the game. But me personally, it kind of pains me to see to have to hunt uh, animals down, but that's also reality. So and and so we had to kind of talk about and figure out a balance of how much do we express that in the game. For Nintendo as a brand, I also thought it's not um, good to just kind of put a blind eye to the fact that you need to kill animals to eat them. So our work was in uh, really trying to uh, figure out how to express that. And um, that's uh, something that we've talked about a lot. As you progress in the game, there'll be different scenes and there'll be different kinds of animals. And I think having those animals really makes the scene uh, and the nature become more real. And uh, of course, there's a lot of animals that aren't uh, for hunting. And there's uh, definitely uh, ways to uh, play the game without uh, needing to hunt animals down either. There's also, they do help the world seem more wild and more real. They add quite a bit of movement to the environment, which helps it come to life but there's also they add kind of a very interesting experience to the game as well because you're out exploring the world and there are enemies in the world that you're kind of having to be wary of and so you can end up in these situations where you're sort of walking through a forest and you catch this motion just sort of out of the corner of your eye off on the side of the screen and you get this slight moment of panic where you're like oh my gosh there's an enemy and you turn and it's this tranquil little deer that's just kind of hopping through the forest and it's so peaceful and serene and you're like, wow, that, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, and then you kill it and eat it. <laughs> and then you, then you kill it and you pick up the meat and you cook it. <laughs> yeah. Was there any particular animal you were fighting for to put in the game? So when I first looked at the, the wild boar, I thought, I really want to keep that in the game. And of course, uh, horses are definitely necessary, the, the wild horses. Sure, yeah, you have to. And so, you know, I, I always thought, you know, I really I really think there should be sheep in there. Like in England, if you uh, climb mountains, you can find a lot of sheep. And I was thinking, like, we should have a lot of sheep. But before I knew it, the designer had already put sheep in there, so it was great. Well, I'm curious why you think it's so hard to predict, like, when a game will be done. 
And so I think there's different ways of the game can be delayed. One is that the core mechanic or the core idea is not uh, established. So that way, in that sense, it's kind of not a delay, but the development just we can't even start. So it goes into kind of pending. And then there's also the time where uh, we see a foreseeable end to the development, but we realize that all the work that we've done thus far and then multiply it with how much is necessary, we kind of realize that you know we're not going to be done. So that in that time, we usually increase the amount of uh, staff involved in that. And if we still can't do it, then um, it becomes a delay. But in this game, uh, because we challenged uh, ourselves in using this physics engine, there was a lot that um, we kind of had to feel out in the end using the shader uh, technique and technology that's available now thinking about how long it's going to take the designer to polish everything up and also kind of really just feeling our way through this physics engine and making sure it works that's uh, what uh, resulted in the delay of this game as games continue to get more and more complicated and consoles get more elaborate is there anything you guys are planning on doing or think you can do to make development of large Zelda games a little bit easier for you guys as developers for this physics engine, we've been able to really figure it out. I think if we decide to use this physics engine in uh, future games, it'll be a lot quicker. But when if we decide to um, and when we decide to use different media or different types of uh, gameplay mechanic, then I think it may take a little bit longer. And that's something that we'll have to figure out as it comes up. Thank you so much for your time. The game looks great. Thank really you. looking forward to playing the final. Ah, thank you. Thank you.